What's up guys, it's Eric here, back for another VOD review. Today, we're doing a VOD review from Mr. Frodan. Somebody who, I don't think I've, have I ever done a Frodan VOD review? I'm not sure, but, you know, TFT caster, I used to know him way back from the Hearthstone days. I mean, he didn't know me, but I used to watch him and, you know, big, big fan of him since back then. And he also, you know, is a very solid ladder player. He's usually sitting around like 1k LP towards like the, the middle of the set. He is you know, a commentator type caster person. He doesn't compete that much. He does every once in a while, but he's no slouch in his uh, in his gameplay outside of, you know, his his content creation and, and casting and stuff. The reason I want to bother you Frodo in this game is because he got an augment that I'm really, really interested to see how it plays out. I still haven't actually got a chance to take this augment yet, uh, but it's a really, really cool augment. It's a fun one. Uh, and a very sort of strange one. One of those augments that kind of bends the way that you play the game. Uh, so far, we have a Faded Opener. Nothing too crazy. We picked up a Senna, who's a fantastic unit. But we also have this kind of like AP item start, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, we have Lucky Streak, which is a fantastic augment. Uh, I don't think Not Today or Gifts are really good. But we reroll our first augment and see the augment that I want to talk about. This is Ethereal Blade. So a quick pause here for anyone who has not been able to, to see this augment before. It gives you a Shen. And your Shen's ability, or your Shen has plus three range and his ability does 100% increased damage. So Shen summons this little like zone around him that reduces damage and then his next three autos do increase damage. If any of you guys remember set eight with actual hero augments, uh, this was, uh, was a hero augment back then. It was called Time Knife where your Shen would do a ton of damage with his abilities. It was so broken for a little while that it had to be hot fix nerfed. And look at it, you can see when the Shen casts, he does some juicy, juicy damage to these units. So this is a really, really fun augment to play around. One of the things that I thought was most interesting is that he immediately picked, immediately picked Death's Defiance, which is the only really pickable Ornn item here. But if you go into the stats, the stats actually love, love, love Death's Defiance on Shen when you have Time Knife. It says it is like the best single item that you can get on him, which is not, you know, something that I would have expected, but I guess it makes sense, right? He needs a little bit of healing because, uh, you know, he still might get aggroed onto, uh, and he's going to do really well gaining extra HP because he has so much armor and MR. The extra HP over more armor and MR is going to make him, you know, a force to reckon with. Like, even here, he gets a behemoth proc. He's a little bit tanky, and that healingness onto the, the tankiness is is really nice. Uh, the other nice thing about Frodan's spot is we have Chain open, we have Rod open. I would say Gwinsu is another item that is really, really high on the priority list when you are playing around this comp. And then a lot of other people like to build, like, a Bramble Vest uh, because his ability scales with armor. So get a ton of armor and then he'll go bop 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 and, and start one tapping people so yeah it's it's a really fun augment to play around so i'm really excited to see what frodan does to, to play around this augment so far we're just playing behemoths we have team builder out seven behemoths just saying we're gonna play all the behemoths that we possibly can uh maybe sure throw a morgana in there i mean we'll see it's he does have two out of three exalted in right now and uh, i believe he checked that so perhaps morgana is exalted i didn't actually get a chance to see but that might uh might definitely be it he gets an option to pick up a Shen on the carousel here, so he could have finished Bramble Vest, but he really wants the Shen for Shen, because getting to Shen 3 is one of the most important things that you can do when you're playing around, you know, a, a hero augment that only works when you have Shen. Um, so I think this makes a, a lot of sense. Just take the extra Shen here. Uh, it's a little bit sad that we can't actually make 30 without either, like, selling the Caitlyn's um, or something. Uh, and our board's not too, too weak, so I guess we can stick on this board for now, but it does feel a little bit bad that we can't uh, actually make gold here at all. Uh, and the the meta TFT tracker here, as far as the uh, the overlay says, we have a zero percent win chance. I don't think I've ever seen that. Maybe they've added that recently. For I'll just get out ahead of it. For anyone who wants to know what his overlay is, this is the meta TFT overlay. Is the one that looks like that because I know I'm going to get a YouTube comment that's what overlay is he using? How does he you know see the stats, the augments, and stuff? Um, and I mean honestly, I shouldn't tell you because it, it farms YouTube engagement right for people to ask questions. So honestly, he's not using the meta TFT overlay. I'll reveal it to you guys if 50 people okay never mind never mind uh but yeah we we don't have the strongest opener yet because we only have this death defiance at least we have the death defiance uh but we don't you know have another item for the shen we don't have like a, a shen 2 high roll situation so our, our board's not amazing we almost actually four lost it but we won one fight in the middle which feels a little bit bad but hey it's one gold you know with their changes to streaks which are actually getting re rechanged back I'm, I'm excited about this they said they're changing streaks so that two streaks are going to exist again so maybe we'll see uh, a world where like lost streaking is is valuable nowadays it's just like win as many fights as you can really but you know we'll see pick up a yone here who 
I guess could fit in as an umbral unit on the, the current board that we have here, but I don't think it's, you know, necessary. Uh, and yeah, making the 50 feels really good here. And we get to pick up another Behemoth, which is really, really nice. Uh, the only item that we get here is a cloak. So the kind of scary thing about Frodan's spot, especially after he took that glove off carousel, is that he doesn't really have many items to make. Uh, the damage is true damage. So, you know, like you could slam something like a spark, but like spark isn't going to do uh, a ton. He's just going to make a steadfast heart here for some extra damage reduction. Once again, just thinking about stats that scale well with Behemoth stats. If you have a bunch of Arm and Armar, damage reduction is really, really nice because it scales well off of that. You want multiple sort of vectors for your stats to scale. HP, Arm and Armar, and damage reduction. Augment wise here, uh, speaking once again, we already have that uh, that ability to, to get extra Arm and Armar. So something that like heals our units. We already have the Death Defiance, but like a Martyr or a Harmacist seems nice. Harmacist maybe, because we already have that healing onto Chen, so that's going to be even more true damage. And yeah, it looks like that's what he's going to pick up. I haven't checked the stats on this, but maybe the stats say that this is really nice. I'm not sure. We're going to level here at 3-2. Ooh, and we're a little bit low on time here, so we end up just playing a Tristana 2 on our board. But hey, I mean, it's a Duelist. It actually fits on the board. Um, I think maybe Fred wanted to roll here, ideally hit like a Shen 2 to spike his board, because the Tristana, I mean, it's damage, but she's zero items. She's not going to be like the biggest unit on this board, but it's an interesting little uh, addition there to get in a Duelist, a Tristana 2, and hey, like we're probably going to win this fight because of, yeah, like Tristal 4k with no items. Pretty cool. I mean, that honestly might just stabilize our board here. Uh, that might be enough. That's, uh, that's a really, really cool transition here. Uh, and now we actually have four Behemoth, which is really nice. We're just trying to figure out the best way to actually fit it into the board um, because we also want to fit all these other upgraded units we have. We have the Tristana 2, we have the Allow 2. We're going to have a lot of gold uh, if we, you know, sell these units down the line to, you know, actually get to our six Behemoth board. Uh, the only downside is that we would, like, lose a gold from actually buying them because when you, you know, make a two-star unit and sell it, as long as it's not a one cost, you're losing gold. But... I digress. We're going to Carousel here, and we want to pick up some kind of Shen item here. We'd really like to get to at least a second item on Shen. Because we made that Steadfast Heart, that means that the Bramble Vest is not an option for us here. There's another Shen on Carousel, but we just can't pick it up. I think something like a Gwinsu would be fantastic here, and sadly, it's on a one cost. We basically have to pick it up, though. Um, we almost, almost, almost got that Ash with a, a bow on it, but I mean, you gotta pick up a, a Shen item here, and I think Gwinsu does very, very well on him when you look at the stats. Uh, and now we can get the Form Behemoth uh, onto the, this board here. Now that we actually have a, a reliable source of damage, he gets out of that Tristana. Shen's going to be enough damage. So now we're just going to go tank stats to the maximum. We still have this Allowee on our board just because, I mean, she's a two-star two ghostly unit. It's uh, it's not bad by any means. And then we also still have this Darius on our board just because, I mean, Umbral is a, a decent synergy once again. It's just... We're playing around what we can, and now look at this Shen, man. Shen 2-star with the Gwinsu. He is kind of juiced up, doing a ton of damage. We just beat someone who has that uh, that augment that I did the video on that uh, makes your shops free. Everything must go. That one is uh, it's pretty divisive. Look, all I'll say about everything must go is it's a very good augment, but it can be very easily played very poorly. I played it on stream a couple of days ago and went the fastest eighth of my life because I did not stabilize enough to actually get to three star four cross and I just died. I've played against many people who have taken it last augment and bought forward. I watched Kai's stream, he took it and went eighth. Um, it's it's obviously insanely high cap and I think like it's, it's definitely broken and probably should be taken out of the game, but it's also pretty easy to mess it up, so. Uh, you know, it's it's always fun to have uh, divisive augments like that. Pick up another Shen here and a Malphite too, which is really nice. Picking up some extra Trogoths here, so that is really nice as well. We're getting close to some of our units. And the other really nice thing that was really cool for us is that there was that carousel that had uh, mini duplicators on everything. Pick up a couple of bows here, a TG as well. That's a Shen too already. Um, yeah, I was going to say, if we find one more Shen, I would probably just start sending it here. We also are finding a ton of Allowies. We're actually one off Allowy 3 now, so are we going to actually play Allowy on this board? This is some pretty sick flex play from uh, Froden here, just saying, okay, I picked up a bunch of Allowies, I guess I'll do this. He decides to actually make the red buff onto the Shen, which in some ways, red buff is like kind of like a Gwinsu, but like, I mean, in some ways a little bit better because it obviously provides the heal cut, in some ways a little bit worse because it doesn't stack up in that way, but I can certainly see the slam. It, it makes sense. Um, you want attack speed onto him. We get Behemoth th Crest here, which I feel like normally is a horrible augment, but probably has to be the pickup here, and this is going to allow us to Behemoth our Allowee, so everything ends up actually kind of working out here. Uh, I have to imagine we're going to get out of this Darius and just play six Behemoth here, just like this, but yeah, it kind of... That, that uh, Behemoth Crest actually was huge here because it allows us to play six Behemoth with that Behemoth Allowee, 
If we didn't have that, then the Alawi, I mean, I guess we keep it on our board because we hit Alawi three, but it's it's just so random without the Behemoth Crest, but the Behemoth Crest makes everything fit. So this is a really cool, like flexible game from Frodan. He is not, you know, opening up Meta TFT or, or uh, you know, his his uh, coaching website, TFT, well, not coaching, but tier list website, TFT Academy, him and Dish Soap's website and looking up the, the best build. He is playing around what he hits. He hits the Alawi two and he's going to play it, which is really, really cool. Uh, if I'm in Frodan's spot here, well, this is actually a really interesting spot. Because we're one off Shen. We're one off Yorick. Yorick matters less than Shen, of course. Um, but you'd love to hit both, ideally. Um, the, the big thing, though, is that your board is really, really strong. Um, so you probably don't actually have to roll here, even though it's really, really tempting to roll. Because you want to roll in this situation because you're one off Shen. But because you have this Alawi 3, because Shen is just kind of a, a monster with this much frontline, yeah, you probably don't have to roll in this situation. So really a smart play by Frodo M2 to, to not roll here. Interesting also that he's holding on to this, um, this Nautilus here, saying that's going to be his next level. He's just going to go full frontline on this board at Warden. It'll be nice for his uh, his tank and uh, be very happy with that. I believe that was a Shen with the sword and it has a Banshee's Veil on it, which, I mean, I don't think Banshee's Veil is amazing uh, for Shen. It's some extra attack speed, which is kind of chill, but I mean, it's it's definitely not bad. Uh, and yeah, he's just going to make the play here to level up here, get the Banshee's Veil onto the Shen and just make Shen 3 with the Duplicator. Not worried too much about these Yo Ricks here. I, I think this is a very smart play from Prodan. Just, you know, York 3, like I said, it's nice, but it is not the end-all be-all. You don't want to waste a bunch of gold rolling for it. You'd much rather push levels. Hey, maybe maybe sometime we can get to that. We can play 8 Behemoth now, right? You need uh, Udir, and then who else are we missing? Um, we're missing Orn. Udir and Orn, you can play 8 Behemoth. And wait, is there an 8 Behemoth? Wait, go back to your... There's no 8 Behemoth! Mort! Oh! Wait, where's, where's our 8 Behemoth, Mort? We can't even play it. We have a spat, but it just doesn't exist in the game. I was like, I looked at his synergies and I was like, wait a minute, is there no 8 Behemoth? It's like, sometimes these things just happen in TFT where they just, they haven't added a chase trait for this uh, because maybe the thing's going to be too broken. Maybe they think, um, maybe they just, you know, haven't had the, the resources to get it in. But that's so sad because this could be an 8 Behemoth Shen game. It would be so sick. I guess having only one spat to get there, maybe it would be kind of broken with this. Look, I remember uh, Riftwalker Kassadin in the past where you would get eight protectors and he would just be a monster that was fun like I'm, I'm down for that to come back but whatever in any case you can see the the value the power of this shen when you have all of this stuff he's looking to figure out what exalted unit he wants to get in here i think that was syndra that he thought about playing there which hey, i don't know what all the exalted units are it seems kind of rough here yeah udir oh tristana is exalted as well but i don't really want to play tristana either um, he's ronan is cooking here trying to figure out what his board's going to be Sword Sword here. I assume we're going to reforge one of these and just look for another tank item. Um, and we do get the opportunity to go for either a... Oh, wait, we have a remover here. Oh, okay. So he's going to remove her, put this onto a Lowey and then go Adaptive Cone here. So I guess he had the other opportunity. He could have brambled his own Shen for the extra armor Namar. The downside is that then he basically has a dead item, right? If he brambles Shen, then where's the red buff going? Red buff Nautilus? It doesn't seem amazing. So Frodo makes the call here that it's going to hurt if he if he has to move this red buff somewhere else, even though he gets kind of like BIS Shen. Uh, he's going to get like a lot worse in slot units uh, on, a, on using his other items. So I think this makes sense. He gets to level for the Caitlyn here. He's going to get Exalted in, throws Adaptive Helm onto Caitlyn with the idea that maybe that's going to become Cinder later. I mean, she's ghostly. Like, in some ways, I almost feel like... I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, like, a Cinder 2 is probably better than a Caitlyn um, 1 or even Caitlyn 2. Um, but adding uh, these extra ghostly stacks is, is not bad at all. Um, but yeah, this is... Ooh, this is a close fight for Cinefelio's board. But look at that Shen. 12k through damage and then the Alawi also blocked 12k damage. Uh, one other thing that I haven't talked about yet, actually... Is this Shen positioning where he's putting it? He's putting it back, but he's putting him towards the middle in each of these fights. I think the idea here is to try to get Behemoth value if possible, because when a Behemoth dies, they give extra armor and MR to the closest Behemoth. Like that, uh, Malphite dying is going to give stats to either the Fresh or the uh, Yorick. I don't know when actually we're going to end up. Uh, it's it's really hard to give Shen the value uh, because your entire front line is is whole of these Behemoth units. It's possible that with him in the middle, maybe. The front line spreads out a little bit and then a frontliner dies and it goes to Shen. But even then, I, I think that's pretty dubious. It, it seems like that's very unlikely to happen. Um, he might just be putting it in the middle so he can burst down certain units in the middle. He's going to take the Spark here. I was talking about earlier that, you know, Spark doesn't do too, too much here uh, in that we're already we're doing a bunch of true damage. But hey, you have a little bit of magic damage coming from the Alawi, coming from the Yorick. 
Uh, now we can get this Orin in, he can start farming items. But yeah, there is no 8 Behemoth to play for, so no reason to try to, to play for that. We'll just play Exalted. It's bonus damage onto our entire team, which is really cool. Ooh, the uh, the Banshee's actually fantastic here because this guy had an Eternal Winter, but we don't have to worry about that because we have Banshees. So actually really, really nice from uh, Mr. Mortog to give us that Banshee's there because that helps a ton. And we are stacking up our XP on the, uh, the Exalted Soul Core here to look for potentially a... Uh, level 10 or well, actually level nine. We're, we're still only level eight. Oh yeah we, we rolled so much but a level nine that would be i don't even know what do you even put in a level nine? i mean you could throw in a random like zir here as a as an ap carry and it's dryad for warren who cares i guess the most beneficial thing you could play is like heavenly like a wukong here uh get even more attack speed onto your dude buff up your entire team I, yeah i would imagine that we would get like heavenly in here but we'll see this looks like the first board that actually looks kind of scary for us, and it is a juiced up board with a Kaisa and an Irelia too, but look at that Shen, man. 17,000 true damage, and he was, the big thing there is not, I mean, obviously 17,000 damage is, is a lot, like that, that's, yeah, that's that's a lot of damage, but what was crazy to me, there was the tankiness of the Shen. He got that cast off, and it looked like, especially with the Death Defiance, that he was just unkillable, and then he just started hitting, healing that HP back, and yeah, it, he was just a, a monster. Uh, itemize here we're just looking for last Orin item whatever that may be i guess it's gonna have to be a brand there's so many bramble vests here but i mean hey there's a there's a yone player here i don't i don't dislike it whatsoever um and yeah he decided to end up playing the tristana i mean maybe there's some kind of duelist he wants to play later maybe he wants to get like an irelia in or something um i guess i mean you could throw in kiana and it'd fill up the synergies really well but what is duelist really doing on this board uh speaking of scary boards this one looked really scary as well but man I, I gotta say, the red buff on this Shen has been fantastic here. Red buff onto his target there has looked really, really good. I was looking at the stats before the game for this, and red buff Shen doesn't look amazing in the stats. I think probably ideally you'd build like a Morello or a Sunfire or something, but it's a really, really nice alternative. He got the double bow drop and decided to just go red buff on Shen, and it's been amazing there, because if you didn't have red buff onto that Yone, it's very reasonable that he just heals up a bunch, and it's, uh, it's very difficult to, to actually end up killing him. We're fighting this Zoe reroll board again. This is the one we kind of stomped last time. And man, this the, the CC immunity has just been so so nice from the uh, from the the Banshees. A really, really, really good pickup off Carousel, and the fact that there was also a Shen for that that was perfect. Uh, but yeah, we're just on a 12 streak here. We're gonna get another support item here, I guess. Um, maybe like a Zeke's or something, a Randuin's, an Aegis of the Legion for some extra attack speed. I can see it. Um, and we're just gonna go nine here and start rolling. I'm curious to see what uh, what Froden ends up playing. He just throws the way in here. It's not quite mythic on the board, but it might be able to paint something. Looks like he's trying to paint a cinder or two here. I mean, this is, it's a bit greedy, but I mean, why shouldn't you be greedy? He's 50 HP. I mean, certainly not the best unit that we could play on this board. Uh, and honestly, my prediction is that the game's gonna be over before we paint this cinder, but hey, wh why not? A little insurance policy, get the cinder two for free. Um, there's a Dryad Emblem here if we want to get Dryad in for Orn. What else do you even want? Like a Sunfire to guarantee something? Yeah, he does go for Dryad Emblem. Finally finds an Udir, by the way, so he can get that in now as just a much better unit than this Malphite. Sadly, there's no way of getting uh, Heavenly in anymore. So what does he want to play? Oh, he's he's gonna... He's, he can think about getting Faded in here, I guess, which is really funny because we're playing the Cinder and the Thresh. Um, so like Faded in over the... Uh, over the way but i mean like uh, i don't know it's such a small synergy on this board at this point and honestly i don't think we need it we almost don't need a ninth unit here just the extra uh damage from exalted is enough and uh, i mean yeah this this game is looking uh like curtains looks like we probably got one more fight uh and then frodan's gonna take the dub but we'll see roll down here try to pick up a cinder two maybe the the person that we're fighting can pick up some kind of upgrade he's gonna duplicate an orn now even though he already has orn too um but i i mean i think it's a formality at this point let's see the last fight here versus this Yone board. Really, really nice position. He gets the red buff onto him immediately. And oh my God, the bop, bop, bop from that Shen. It's so, so easy for him to just one shot. It's kind of a Yone counter in many ways. So, you know, if you guys want to comp that counters Yone, uh, maybe this is it. Really, really fun game from Frodan. Really, really fun to watch. I loved a lot of the decisions he made this game. Hope you guys enjoyed this VOD. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my Twitch and all my other links down below. Thanks for watching.